Hi, my name is Martin Krasion. I'm the curator of We Belong Here, an exhibition by Yuken Teruya at Piero Chugarri Gallery in Miami. I believe that contemporary art tells a story about what the artist is living through. It responds to the concerns of the present that can be personal, social, political, and translate them into forms to be presented. This ongoing dialogue of ideas has a sense of urgency. It introduces ways of seeing and experiencing the world. Our daily contemporary lives present so many questions and problems that are difficult to be answered. I think Yukon assumes the commitment and tackles them with great honesty. We Belong Here can be described as a declaration of principles through personal research. You can propose a space for active contemplation to discover a be fascinated by this impressive craftsmanship filled with personal outlooks and statements. As a curator, I try to create undefined spaces we could inhabit and circulate. We approach the space with ease, creating a narrative drawn by the tension and encounters of the different artworks. You can combine techniques and mixes various everyday materials to reflect on contemporary society. Themes such as consumer culture, globalization and the environmental crisis are present in this exhibition. Yukin Teruya is a Japanese artist living in Berlin. He has developed a singular voice through his experience of living for more than 20 years in Western countries. The exhibition opens with a site-specific wall installation. Yukin installed with delicate care a complex constellation of tiny sculptures. Meticulously dissected with an ex-acto knife, Yukin cuts Monopoly toy money and resembles it with pins through all the wall. The grid reminds us of textile patterns, wrapper prints. Teruya's symbolic use of Monopoly toy money offers us a critical starting point for understanding what lies beneath. Referencing the basis of capitalism, the world-famous board game trains us for modern life. Players buy, sell, and collect rent from their opponents. The game is a clear mimic of the capitalistic system, as direct and cruel as day life for most of us. There are two series of works on display created with Monopoly money. One depicting floor plans of powerful institutions, such as museums and churches, and the ones configured into abstract compositions. The Louvre Museum in Paris, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, Washington National Cathedral and Notre Dame Cathedral come together in an exercise of pure precision, patience and composition. Not able to be fully comprehended in a quickly glance, the tiny elements of the Monopoly series are an invitation to slow down, to come closer and discover. There is a Monopoly piece on a pedestal recreating the floor plan of Paris Notre Dame Cathedral, which suffered a devastating fire in April 2019. It was created just with three Monopoly money notes. The burning of the cathedral is a disaster for the entire world's heritage. The Monopoly series is a powerful and defiant work. It is evident that art won't save the world, but what can be learned from it? A group of trees lies down on the floor. These fir and pine trees were bought at Christmas, discarded by their owners weeks later, and then collected off the streets by Teruya as part of the artist's ongoing reflection on our increasingly globalized culture. His fascination with elements of popular culture and mass culture often results in such formal excesses, involving the installation of ready-made objects. These trees have lost their function in this world. Lying on the gallery floor, they will change color from green to yellow, from yellow to brown, a spectacle made by nature. The comments slow and stop can be read on two of Teruya's latest pieces. Created with the ancient technique of frottage, the paperworks translate real road signs found in Miami. Stop and slow are the most direct and clear statements of the exhibition. These works also offer a clear reference to the performative practice of the Situationist. A group of sneakers hangs from the ceiling of the gallery. They belong to Yukon. 
This installation is a clear reference to a quite intriguing urban practice found all around the Western world. Do sneakers hanging from power lines carry a secret message? This urban myth connects us to street life. It has no one single meaning and no unique answer can be found for this practice. People speculate that they are memorials from lost loved ones or imprisoned ones, signposts marking the territories of gangs, or even advertisement for drug dealers' presence in the neighborhood. But slinging shoes over a power line could also merely be an invented tradition, a strange part of our city culture, with people doing it because they see others doing it, and so on. That is to say, as many of our contemporary rituals that we copy it from somebody in a social habit that creates culture. Near to an opposite wall, two Bingata dyed kimonos stand still. Bingata is a traditional Okinawan dyed cloth, made using stencils and other printing methods. Yukin has redesigned the patterns, which still follow the traditional guidelines. They use bright color print, featuring various patterns that depict natural subjects as fish, water and flowers. In Yuki's kimono, Bingata aesthetics functions as a mirror of Okinawan history itself. American fight jets and cars fly around colorful clouds and troopers float among Okinawan butterflies. Okinawa has a long history of occupation. It's a resulting culture, a mix of its traditional local culture with Japanese and American cultures. The kimonos are separated by two international brand sneaker boxes, which have undergone a surgical intervention with an X-Acto knife. With absolute precision, the artist has created beautiful forms with his cutouts. The flora of Okinawa. Boxes are waste materials, containers for mass consumer products, here renewed with a symbolic function through a crafted gesture. We belong here is not a balancing act, but also a questioning of the various forms that former Western, now global society has generated. Depictions and rituals, buildings and signs, all overloaded by different materials, scales, mediums and techniques. Yuken's idea reverberate on us in infinite ways, shifting shape as we draw on our own association and experiences. It might not tell story in a way that it is immediately recognizable, but it might be something that you have a frame of reference for. I think the challenge is exciting because when the public make connections, they belong to them.